Good evening everyone and welcome to another live stream, whether you're watching live or if you're watching this video later. Just want to say a huge thank you to go into the painting. Let's actually talk about what Blanchitsu is. So if I just, um, let's just have a look at these here. So a few of you may recognize this kind of artwork. Now this is the artwork of John Blanche and this is what Blanchitsu is is named from. Now, John Blanche is one of the artists who's responsible for a whole bunch of Warhammer 40k artwork, and he's basically often credited with being one of the people who helped to shape the grim, dark appearance of the Warhammer 40k universe. If you've picked up codexes, Warhammer 40k rulebooks, anything like that, you've probably seen a lot of his work. And it's this kind of style that I'll be looking to recreate on a model. Now, if I just kind of skip through a couple of these here, we have um, a few images here of particular Death Guard miniatures. So this is a Mortarian sketch that he did. So you can see one of the prevailing things about this is the lots of like warm colors that he uses. He uses very much kind of um, browns, reds, uh, cream, tan colors. And that's what I'm going to look into kind of recreate here. So if we just go to the next slide. So this is actually a Death Guard. Um, that he, he did some artwork of. And this is kind of what I'm using as the basis. I'm not following it exactly, but I'm using it as the basis. Now, I'll just bring in a model here. Now, many of you may recognize this particular model as being um, one that showed up on my community feed a couple of months ago. And that was basically created as, as part of an attempt to kind of come up with a scheme that I could use with my own Death Guard forces. And this is basically what I came up with, but unfortunately I kind of got, I kind of shelved it and I thought with, with ninth edition just around the corner, then I would probably start up this Death Guard army again. So I thought, why not actually share this with you and go through the painting process? So this is basically the finished model. Um, it doesn't have any basing on there, but most of the scheme that I'm going for here is pretty much there. And I also wanted something that I could paint quickly. I could get through an army quite quickly and as a result, I basically decided to use contrast paint. And I'll be using the, the techniques that I used to create this model here. So if we actually bring in the model I'll be painting in this video, actually there's gonna be three models I'll be painting, but this is just the, um, the first stage. Now, one of the things you'll notice is I've started off with this tan color. Now, over the base coat that I've actually used, the, the primer color that you can just about see underneath there, it's just kind of like red coloring. And if you can just see that there. So basically this, is essentially a, um, a kind of a zenithal highlight that I've done. I've sprayed from the top and started off with a red primer and then sprayed from the top with like a tan color. Um, you can use this with airbrushes. You can use this with um, regular aerosol spray cans. But the important thing is really just to get a little bit of distinction between the shadows and the kind of the lighter areas to begin with. Now from here, we're actually going to be using some contrast paints. So the first one that I'm going to be using is um, this Griff Hound Orange here. Now I've used contrast paints quite a lot in my videos. Um, I find that they're actually, a lot of people give them a lot of stick when they first came out and I think it's undeserved really. Um, they're not magic bullets for painting. You're not gonna be able to paint everything instantly by using them, but they do have their uses and this is one of the uses that I'm gonna be demonstrating. So I'm not gonna be painting this whole model and that style in this video, but I've kind of split it up into segments. I've got a few kind of prepped models just so you can we can get it all done in the hour. But as I'm painting this, if you have any questions, um, then please do let me know, ask away, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. So yeah, a few people are saying about the exposure here. I'm not actually sure, it's just adjust my lighting. Okay, unfortunately the auto exposure just seems to take precedence over everything. Um, so thank you Lady of Deception for super chatting. Um, how easy would it be to adapt this technique to an ultramarine since blue is obviously a cold color? So it tends to be a little bit harder to do this with, um, with ultramarines um, because generally speaking, I find that with contrast paints, the warmer colors tend to work best. Um, the, the cooler colors are a little bit trickier to get right, but I think you could do it. I think if you started off with a um, like a black base color and then you did some 
dry brushing or airbrushing of some white highlights and then over the top of that you went over with like an ultramarine blue you could get some good effects and then when we come to the actual grim dark section later where i add that kind of grime filter that's when we'll actually start seeing the technique come come about at this point it'll look a bit strange and look a bit garish but don't worry so what i'm doing here is i'm actually just painting the rust and literally everything on this model that is metal is going to be rust colored um, so this includes all these trims here all the weapons this, this flail of corruption that i've got here it's just going to be going on quite roughly now we don't really need to worry too much about getting this perfect because the style itself really does kind of allow itself to be a little bit messier, a little bit more kind of haphazard. If I just bring in, let's just bring in back those pictures whilst I do this. So if you just see the um, that piece of artwork that we're basing on, I mean, he hasn't stayed within the lines there. There's colors overlapping everywhere. He's used a lot of like watercolors, it seems, and those are kind of notorious for just being not quite as uniform as maybe like acrylic painting would be. So that's something we're trying to recreate here. And this is why I'm starting off with a lighter base color as well, because you kind of got to treat these as painting with watercolors. You always start off with like a, a light uh, color, and then you apply the watercolors over the top. So you can see I just went over the hand there, but it, it doesn't really matter because it's going to be covered up later on anyway, and it all adds that kind of um, that effect that we're going for. So not to say that you can just be really slapdash you do need to have a little bit of control but if you do make the little mistakes that's fine don't worry when you've got a whole army of these no one's going to really notice this slight millimeter of overspill that you've made with your with your uh, paint especially when it actually gets um it's among all those other models it just adds to that whole kind of nurgly appearance so i'm using this straight at the part as you can see i've not used it on a uh, wet palette i mean you can if you want to you can apply a couple of thinner layers if you want, but I mean, it's fine, neat. It's all right. Um, so let's just grab them bits, okay. So I'm gonna be keeping an eye on the time here. I might skip ahead a few steps, but don't worry. I will cover everything in some way, shape or form. I just wanna make sure I actually get the whole theme done. Now, unfortunately, I mean, whilst this method is pretty, is a pretty quick painting method, it's actually, on these models, it actually ends up being a lot slower because you've got to get all these little metal detaily bits. Um, so it's not necessarily speed painting, but it is faster than maybe um, some of the, I did that Lord of, um, Lord of Corruption, was it? Lord of Corruption video a while ago, the, like, the more traditional kind of painting video. And that took a lot longer than this will take. So if you want to paint a full force up, then this is definitely a better technique than that one that I featured in that video. So let's have a look at, let's just move this out of the way just so everyone can see. Um, let's have a look at the chat and see how what's going on in the chat. Like I said, if you've got any questions, just feel free to ask them. I will keep glancing up every now and again. Um, if I go quiet, I'm probably reading the chats and coming up with a with an answer. Make a penal legion video. Yeah, it's something I kind of did something similar i suppose it wasn't it wasn't quite exactly penal legion i did a that called old savoir chem dogs video um and i suppose that's the closest i've been to i've never actually done anything um a penal legion that it'd be a good excuse to use chains as well so i mean if, if uh it's always good to use the chains in the videos and that's a good as good as any reason no one can uh, criticize me for my overuse of chains in that particular video um but yeah there's some pretty cool ideas that i've got for that there's also some pretty good kind of conversion parts as well knocking around for different companies um i think victoria miniatures do some good ones i think Cromlech maybe do some anvil industries those kind of places they do like nice little alternative bodies that you could use for representing penal legions or I could just use some flagellants because I think I did it a long time ago, actually. I did a um, a conversion. When I used to paint, uh, well, sorry, I used to actually play the game of 40K. This was maybe about, ooh, 
how old am I? About 14 years ago, probably. Last time I properly used to play regularly. Um, I actually had uh, collected orcs, and as part of that, I basically converted some. Um, I, I used. Which are the ones that kind of are they the the ones that loot everything? Are they the um, the death skulls? Are they the blue ones, blue and black ones? Um, I basically had an army of those, and instead of using uh, grots, I actually used some flagellants um, that were kind of set up with imperial guard weaponry to represent essentially humans that have been looted by the orcs and were kind of being put to service. So they kind of obviously they weren't trained; they were just people that had been caught, so they had the same stat lines as grots, but. It was probably one of my first conversions that I actually, one of the first ones that I did that I pulled off quite well. I've always been doing conversions, which is why I quite like doing them in the videos today. So how are we going? Okay, so we get, we're getting most of this done fairly quickly. How long have we been going for? I mean, it's only 10 past nine. I think I actually started this probably only about five minutes ago. So you can see just how quickly you can get these colors down. And this is probably the most long winded step of all these. The rest of them are always fairly straightforward compared to this particular step. Uh, that's a bit of metal there as well. So again, we just overlapped onto the things a little bit, but don't worry, that can be resolved later on. Will we ever get Guardsmen allies for Space Marines video, Roman looking Guardsmen for Ultramarines? Yeah, so someone actually um, suggested doing, um, once I finish my Chaos Cultist series, and the only one I've got left to do for that one is um, uh, Black Legion. Once I've done with that, I'm probably going to go and have a look at doing some kind of Imperial Cult. Um, but one thing that someone suggested was actually having essentially the Chaos Cultists, but for the Loyalist Legion. So I suppose they wouldn't be necessarily Cultists, they'd be more like uh, planetary defense forces of the home planets, either that or they'd be maybe um, a populace that kind of felt inspired by the presence of um, of that particular chapter. Maybe they'd saved them in the past and then kind of styled themselves after them. So maybe um, like a feudal world would style itself after the Dark Angels, kind of imitate the, the Night Heraldry going on there. Maybe the Black Templars, maybe you'd have like a monastery world and they'd have like a, some kind of maybe like actual monks with weapons and things like that. So I think that was a pretty cool idea. I thought I could do some, um, some interesting ideas with that. Sub two will any or will any. Uh, Aldo videos, yeah. Um, I've actually been kind of, I want to do a few more of the Xenos videos. And one of the ones that I've had an idea for, and I've kind of been knocking around. Um, I actually brought the, the, the kits a while ago, but never actually got around to doing anything with it. And that particular one was some uh, Aldo Exodites. And I really wanted to kind of do something where I mix maybe some sil Sylvaneth components with some um, wraith guard to make out that the, almost like the, the wraith bone that they've been constructed from had been altered by the worlds or it, it'd been kind of adopted to nature or like a death world or something like that. So I kind of wanted to do something along the lines of that. I thought it was quite an interesting idea. Um, it's just something I never got around to though. It's still on the table. It's still my little Google Docs notes pad, which has got all the little ideas that I get suggested or that I think of. And um, there's lots of ideas in there. Some of them probably will be done. Some of them probably never see the light of day. Um, some of them are just waiting for the right kit to use as a basis, but no. There's always ideas coming around. So Aldar, yeah, I would like to see Aldar in the future. Pete, do you, uh, do you not play any war game nowadays? Um, I, I kind of, I did play a little bit of bolt action with my wife. Um, she's quite interested in and World War II stuff, and she actually got quite interested in bolt action. Um, she actually paint, managed to paint up a thousand points of uh, US Airborne, and I was completely blown away, really, because, I mean, I, it, it, it's something, it's quite annoying, actually, that I find that she's she's actually very good at painting. Um, and I spent years and years trying to get to, like, a level of painting that she just naturally falls into. Um, but, yeah, she I used to play um, bolt action with her. I haven't done for a while, but I'd like to do a little bit more again in the future. Um, but I'm actually hoping to join a club and actually get some 
40k and some bolt action in there, get some games going, maybe have some bit more rule stuff on the channel in the future. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, the contrast paint. So the contrast paint that I'm using is, I think you can just about see it there, it's, it's a Griffhound orange, a really nice bright orange. It's one of my favorite ones, it's great for doing rust. Um, on its own, it, it's like, obviously it's a little bit too garish, but for like a scheme like this where I'm going to be applying something that dulls it down later on, it's really good for it. Okay, so I think, I don't think there's much else on there that I've missed, but I'm sure I'll probably spot some, ah, the pipes. I always forget those little bits of the inside of the pipes. So like I said, everything that's metal on here is, I've only just noticed that, look at that strange little hole in the bottom there. That's a bit worrying. <laughs> Okay, as so I think that is all the metal. I think I've not. Don't think I've missed anything. Um, I like to see small scale painting. Have you seen my Flames of War stuff? Um, I've done. There should be some more Flames of War content coming as well. Um, that's a very small scale. Um, but yeah, there will be some more scale, uh, smaller scale stuff in the future. Or will you talking more about the streams? So, Halo Geek, I remember you from the last stream. Um, I love the tutorial you did for Red Power Armor a while back. What base coat and stipple highlights should I use to paint yellow in a similar manner? I the brown and sand from red. Um, so, I'm not actually 100% sure about that. I haven't, I'm not having tried it out, but I think maybe, um, maybe a purple. And the reason I say purple is because of um, it's. It, if you look on a color wheel, it's the one that sits across, across from it, so it's a contrasting um, color. So if you start off with a purple and then kind of stipple up using the same kind of techniques that I used in that video, um, I think you might get quite a stark contrast between the colors. I'm not sure though. Maybe try it out. Maybe I could try it out in the future. Okay, so the next paint that I'm using is I'll just show it to you. Blood Angels Red, and this is going to be used on the the cloth and if i just quickly transition you can see on this particular model um you can see how the actual cloth can i get my finger lined up there you, go. you can just kind of that, that red section there um i think it's cloth it's hard to see um but red is also a, pre a very prevalent color in this kind of thing if i just cycle through um yes yeah, so you can see the red that's being used dotted about and I'm basically going to be using that as any cloth. Okay, so... I'm just going to be, again, applying straight out the pot and applying it straight over these areas of cloth. So again, this is going to be a lot quicker to do now because there's, there's hardly any areas compared to what we had last time. Last time there was there's so many areas of, of metal to cover on these models, especially with the banding on the armor. I mean, it's Mark III power armor, and I do love Mark III power armor, so I can't complain too much, but there's an awful lot of banding on it. And it's really thin banding as well, which makes it harder. Let's just get the back of it as well. Okay, and just don't forget the handle. So there's some areas on this as well that you'll find where you've got these like little bits of wood. And you don't need to worry about capturing those because um, when we reapply our grime later on, it's brown. So it just kind of makes it look like wood anyway. So you don't need to worry about those. So only really those really bright colors that you need to kind of focus on. So I am being a little bit more careful with this red than I was with the orange. It, it doesn't look quite too bad. It doesn't look too bad when you apply it, but then you want to make sure that you've got a fairly neat appearance. So I think that's everything for the red. So you can just see how quickly you can kind of cover the area with contrast. One layer, straight out the pot, done. Simple. Um, the next color is going to be for all of these pipes and tentacles and things like that. Now, if I just bring in the one that I finished. Now, this technically is a little bit of a deviation from that style, that kind of the artwork. Um, 
it's extremely bright. It's terrible, this uh, exposure. As you can see it there. Um, you can see if we just gone for the... It kind of makes it a little bit red, but it's slightly different against the red. So it doesn't look quite as much... It doesn't stand out quite as much. Um, but it has, helps to add a little bit of variation in colour whilst kind of keeping with that red tone. Okay. Um, let's see if I can just adjust this exposure again. I haven't found... No, that makes it worse. Take that framing off, actually. But that maybe is not helping it. Um, auto white balance image settings. Is that changing it now? No, I'm still doing it. I'll sort that out for the next time. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, so the next color is Volupus Pink. And this is what I'm going to be using for all of the scales. And again, straight from the pot, no need to worry about um, a palette or anything like that. I'd love to see a conversion of a corn fall in such a bat. Now, this is actually something I've been kind of thinking about, but I don't know enough about the lore. Is, is there much kind of um, evidence in the lore of Sisters of Battle falling to chaos? Because it just seems like one of those things. I know they have the, the kind of um, Sisters Repentia or Repentia or something like that. And I know they're the kind of ones that have, have basically had some sort of bad experience which has caused them to obviously try and atone for their sins. Well, I didn't know if anyone's actually fallen straight to chaos. Maybe anyone who's very good with the, with the law can answer that for me. So there's one named, okay. Okay, so it's possible then. I always find that it's always easier to do, even if it's only a tiny little slither of a crack in the law that allows you to get away with something, it's always good to do that. I mean, the whole reason I was doing my um, kind of primus, my, I can't remember, it was a while ago now actually, the primus conversions that used uh, traitor gene seed is because that one line that basically Cole said, oh yeah, he's um, he's been able to make Primus using the, the Legion, the Traitor Legion Gene Seed, and Gilman's just like, no, don't do not do that. But that little bit of, just a little bit of a nugget of information was just enough to think, yep, yeah, okay, this is, this is feasible, I can do this, and I just ran with it. And that's the great thing about conversions. Okay, so there's always a bit of a distinction here to make between things like spikes and things like the tentacles. Now what I'm also going to do is just around these like, shrunken heads, I'm just going to apply a little bit just around the eyes and the mouth. And the reason I'm doing that is just because when we come to it later, it'll look a little bit more, it'll help those features to stand out a little bit more later on than if we just left them. Okay, I think we've got everything. Okay, so I think that is all of the contrast paint steps. Oh no, I've missed one. I spoke too soon. There we go. But again, don't worry too much if you do miss things. The kind of grime that we'll add later on will help to um, mask those areas anyway. And when you've got like a whole army of these things, no one really cares. If you're looking to obviously do something for display purposes, then that's fine. So the final step before we actually start getting to the more um, interesting part of this process is just to apply some very quick, very dirty white highlights. I'm just using some white paint here. This is the AK Interactive White, the intense one. And I'm just going to thin that down a little bit. About one-to-one -one mixture should do. So now that we've got this mixture, it's just a kind of a very kind of transparent mixture that we've got here. So I'm just going to focus on all these areas that are protruding, these bony spikes, things like that. I'm just going to do some very quick highlights, especially this face here. It's very easily just going on like so. I'm 
let me do pick out these as well. I'm not actually sure how what color to go for these sections yet, but I can come to those later on and just apply the white for now. Get these spikes along here. Uh, the ones coming out the feet. And again, this is basically just to help these areas just to uh, stand out a little bit more. It adds a little bit of variation to the model, stops it all looking incredibly flat. And let's go the spikes there as well. Have you tried the new AK-30 Gen Acrylics? I was curious to what you... I actually did a whole tutorial, a whole... Not tutorial, a kind of like a review. It was kind of the precursor to the, doing these streams. Um, yeah, I do. I've used a few of them. I do like them in a nutshell. Um, I really like... I've gotten used to using very intense colored paints recently. And they're very nicely... Um, pigmented so you get a lot of decent coverage with just a little bit of paint and you can thin it down as well it makes them really easy to work with but yeah check that video out Sons of Malice who are they? I've heard them um, I've heard them around but I can't remind me of who they are Sorry about the delay as well, guys. I'm kind of looking at these chats. I'm asking questions. I'm waiting for a response, but then I realize there's a little bit of a delay. So I probably should just carry on. Okay, so what we've got here is basically done now. This is um, all of the base coats that have kind of been applied. But at the moment, it's looking very bright. And before we can move on to the next step, one of the things we need to do first is to... Um, apply a coat of gloss varnish. Now the reason why we apply the gloss varnish is because it will um, it will help to protect the paint job that we've currently got, which it will become more apparent later on, but it also allows the next layer to go on a little bit more easy. And um, instead of varnishing this on camera, which will take a while, I'll wait for it dry, things like that. I've actually, in true Blue Peter fashion, if you grew up in the UK, you'll know what that means. Um, I've actually, here's one I made earlier. So this one has basically been painted up to the same level as the last one, as this guy, so you can see here. Although I had to do a bit heavier with the um, with the tan color on this one than this one, but it won't matter too much once it's actually finished. And this one's already got a gloss varnish. So the whole thing has been given a varnish, like a gloss varnish, you see why it's all shiny. And over top of this, we can actually start applying some of this. Now, this is uh, Streaking Grime. And this one's from MIG, but I mean, AK Interactive do one. They do a bunch of different colors. Now, this one, I like this one because it's brown. Some of the Streaking Grimes that you get have slight, maybe bluish colors to them. Some of them have greens. But the brown one is what you want for this kind of scheme. I've used um, the... Um, I've used the green one before and it didn't quite have the same result as I wanted, so I'm using the brown one instead. So this one is actually an enamel paint, an enamel-based paint, which means it needs to be worked with slightly differently than your regular paints. Now you can apply this with a brush, um, and that's fine, it does work quite well as a brush, but it's best to apply it with an airbrush. So I'm gonna be using an airbrush now. Now, this could go horrendously wrong because <laughs> I'm doing this on camera and my compressor is exactly the, the quietest of compressors in the world. So if it does get annoying, do tell me and we can kind of just skip ahead. But the basic premise is, is we want to apply a mixture of this into our airbrush and we're going to thin it down with some thinners specifically. We can't just use water with these kind of paints. We need to use actual thinner. So this is an Abteilung 502. It's German, I'm probably mispronouncing it, so I do apologize. And I'm gonna use this as the basis of the thinner. I really like this one because it's matte effect. And I think some thinners actually end up giving you a very glossy appearance. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this in this pipette. I'm gonna drop about three. I probably don't even need that much actually. Just pop the rest back in there. And then Make sure I pop the lid on that. If I don't, then I will knock it over, no doubt. Why don't I do a big Zvezda? 
that's how you pronounce it. I, I've actually done 135 scale in the past. Um, I just kind of never got round to doing it on any real meaningful, meaningful scale and this kind of thing. It just takes a long time. <laughs> that's my main kind of reservation about it. It's just the, the length of time that this, that this kind of things take. Um, so I've just kind of dropped some streaking grime, about the same amount as I added in with the thinners. And I just need to mix that around a bit. I'm just going to use this pipette because I don't have anything else to hand that isn't a brush that I don't want to immediately wreck. I'm just going to mix that around like so and put that somewhere safe. Okay. And then we can close that up. What's with the glove? Does it help with painting? Um, no, it doesn't help with painting, but as you can see, I've already got the paint on my fingers. And when you're using these kind of paints, especially, they actually stick to your skin and contrast paints do terribly as well. And I was kind of sick and tired of going out or going to work with paint kind of stuck all over my fingers. And often um, I would use my thumbnail as like a little bit of a palette. And sometimes I'd go to work and I'd realize I've still got paint all over my thumbnail. It looks like I've been painting my nail. Um, so it, it's mainly just as it also helps protect the models. Why I find um, you have like oils in your skin, which can sometimes damage the paint when you're touching it. But these nitrile gloves tend to help. Um, so we've got our mixture. We've got the compressor. So again, do apologize if it's a bit noisy. It's kind of as far away from the microphone as it can be. So hopefully this mixture is correct. Okay, so we're just going to use this for a little bit. Let's just. Um, Um, are you going to do a conversion review for the followers of Bile? I actually saw the community article today and um, I really liked where they were kind of going with them. I liked how they had special rules and they had like increased strength. Was it strength and movement or something? Or toughness and movement, one of them. Um, so yeah, I think maybe I will pick up that particular book for Psychic Awakening, mainly because it's got Death Guard rules in there as well and they do or will be compatible with Ninth Edition. So I'll probably pick it up, see what the rules are like, see what the laws are like and maybe do some conversions of maybe some failed primers experiments something like that so we've got the airbrush here and I'm just going to be applying this over the whole model and it goes on fairly thinly I do apologize again for the compressor I actually probably got a little bit too much thinner in there let's just adjust that ratio a little bit there we go that's better So tricky is just to layer up the grime kind of slowly. Don't go too heavy in one place because it doesn't dry very quickly. And if you don't, then it kind of pools. And we don't want that. We want just nice, even coverage. So this first coat is basically just an all-over coat. We're going um, over. Yes, I, 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 I should be wearing a mask. I do... I've got a window near me. I did actually have one. I got carried away. There we go. I've got my mask. There we go. I'm wearing my mask. So if you can't hear me, then... It will make you die less. I mean, it's okay. I've got I've got years left. Hopefully, uh, science will be there in the future to replace my acrylic paint-filled lungs. So once I've got a, a nice kind of base layer across the whole thing, then. Um, one of the things that I want to do is to focus more into these recesses. So things like under the armpits here, um, around the back, and just basically anything. If you look at the model like that, and you can kind of see any areas that you can see there, I want it to be darker. Any areas I can see there, I want it to be lighter, and that just helps to add a little bit of variation into the model. And just create a little bit of shading. So what time are we on? 35. I think we're making good time, guys. I think this is actually uh, 
coming on a little bit quicker than I thought it would do, so that's good. Okay, so you can see what we've got here. Um, we've basically got a little bit more of a lighter area at the top and darker areas at the bottom. Now what we need to do is we need to leave this to dry and you can kind of come back to it to apply a second coat over the top. But you don't need to. Um, you can literally just use it as it is if you want to speed up the whole process. Let's just apply a little bit more though. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to put that to one side. We can leave that alone for the time being. And that's all we need to do for the airbrushing for now. So let me just empty out my airbrush. Actually, I'm just going to pop a lid on it first and I'll leave it to one side. And we can come back to that in a second. Uh, don't question, is this method doable with a brush? Yes, um, you can do it with a brush. Um, you can... Um, use like a larger brush for it. Don't use like a small brush, it'll take forever. Um, and just apply several thin layers and build it up. The reason why I'm not using a brush is because it doesn't quite give a smoother finish. So if I just bring in a model that I, again, here's one that I prepared earlier for you guys. Uh, so this is one that I've actually um, sprayed with the grime earlier on, and you can see it here. And this one has already basically been done, it's dried, and you can see that matte effect that's come out now. And that's why I like using the matte effect varnish. And you also notice a few areas here. Now, a few areas that you'll notice where the, where the paint has kind of come off. Now, normally you would want to varnish this before you actually use it because these kind of enamel paints, they're not as, they don't stick to the surface of the model quite as well when you've got a gloss varnish underneath. But this is why we um, need to actually use the gloss varnish, not only to protect the model beneath it, but also to make the step a little bit easier. Now, for this step, you're going to need a cotton swab. Everything's really bright. I do apologize. I need to get that sorted. I have a look at the settings, but I can't find anything. Um, and then I'm going to be using some white spirit. Now, this one is basically white spirit. It works just as well, but this is called safer spirit. Um, it's not quite as strong, and it's just a little bit, I suppose, more eco-friendly. It's a little bit more expensive, though. That's the only thing. Um, and I'm just going to get the cap. I'm just going to pop a little bit in the cap, and then just pop this very far away so I don't spill it. I should have got a little pot for this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip my brush in, well, my brush, my little cotton swab into there. I don't want this to be completely saturated. I want it to be kind of moist. I don't want it to be completely covered in it because I don't want to, when I'm applying it, I don't want it to flow and pull. I don't want to use it as a proper brush. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start removing some of this paint in the areas that we didn't want it to be. So things like here, and you can see when I just brush that over the top, it starts to lift off that grime and it starts to create these instant highlights. But what will happen is once this re it reactivate it, but then it will actually dry again. So you can see there, it's just lifting it off and I'm using this in a way that's kind of quite reminiscent to how I use dry brushes. I'm very lightly lifting it off over the surface and that just creates these areas of lighter paint showing through. And again, I'm just kind of focusing them towards the top. There we go. Just a little bit around the blade and that helps create like a nice rusted blade effect. Can you see that there? Yeah, so let's, let's just do a little bit around this chest panel here. Now if we didn't use the gloss varnish then what would actually happen is this spirit would actually start to um, remove the layers of paint beneath it and when I first started it, I didn't apply a heavy enough layer of the thin of the uh, the varnish and as a result I started to actually just remove the paint beneath it um, and then end up with like a grey model. I was like, why is it grey? And like, oh yeah, that's because I've just straight up removed all of the paint. Um, so the gloss varnish is important, it'll help to protect the model, but again, don't apply too much at this stage, you just want to apply little bits, just enough to lift that paint up. And you can see, there we go, we can see that it's starting to lift up this technique. Now, the colors I'm going for here as well, you'll notice that the color scheme is very much reminiscent of the traditional Death Guard kind of heresy, pre-heresy style. 
with the bone colored armor. And it's and to be honest, it's my favorite kind of style. The green's a little bit meh. It's okay. It looks okay, but I do like this bone color. I think it it, it really helps to give you many more options when it comes to um, adding weathering and things like that. Because it's lighter color, you can kind of go a little bit heavy with the weathering, and it just helps. It's a nice canvas, especially for these kind of effects. So, I mean, you can kind of go as heavy at this stage as you want. You can remove a lot of the paint. I'm just going to refresh that because it's getting a little bit saturated with the lifted off paint. So, I'm just going to use a cleaner side. You can go a little bit heavier or you can go a bit lighter. It really is up to you. You can vary, add some variance between the models in your army. They don't need to be completely uniform. After the rule, they are a plague legion. And again, I'm following that kind of idea of leaving the areas in the recesses alone, keeping those as that darker browny color as well. There we go. So let's have a look at some of the comments because we're actually making very good time, 20 minutes. Okay, so I was actually worried I was going to run out of time for this one, but I think we might be able to get a little bit more done than I expected. Um, you know what? I probably should have made another one for this. That would have been a good idea. Oh, well. We'll make do with what we've got. I'm just going to allow that to dry for a second. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now, and I'll have a look. Just whilst I leave that to one side for a second. Um... Where are we? Is this going to be on your YouTube channel later? I won't be able to watch the stream for much longer. Yes, um, so this will be, all the streams I'll be doing will be just be adding straight to uh, YouTube afterwards. You don't need to worry about um, missing the stream. I would like it if you join the stream because obviously you can ask questions, but if you can't watch it, don't worry. All this goes on to YouTube uh, afterwards. You should airbrush citadel washes on the models. Yeah, you could do. Um, if you wanted to go for something a little bit different, you can maybe add some cooler colors in there, maybe some blues, just to kind of offset against um, the, the warmer palette that I've opted for here. And this is actually something I wanted to do to experiment a little bit with this model when I get around to it. How I've got the, um, the section here. Um, you can just about see how these little sections that poke out. They're like really useful for maybe doing some blues. I'm not sure whether or not experiment with blues or go for greens. Not quite sure yet. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much how most of the models are going to be. I've got this little kind of section here. I think a green will stand out nicely, like a very bright green. But a blue would probably be a lot more prominent and also kind of create a different degree of contrast, especially against the oranges in the model. Okay, so I think that's... Yeah, that's drying off now, so that's okay. I think we can move to the next step. So one of the things that I did do um, that I I would recommend kind of varnishing at the stage, but my airbrush is full of um, streaking grime, so I'm not going to be able to do that and clean it out in the next 15 minutes. So I'm just going to kind of go ahead. So if this fails, then I do apologize. Um, one of the things I wanted to do to kind of bring out some of the metals is to use these. Now, I've used these on my channel before, and these is graphite. Um, you can get graphite in lots of different forms. You can get it as a powdered pigment. You can use it as a pencil, or you can get these little graphite sticks here. Now, I, I like using these sticks because they're just easy to use. Now, this is another reason why it's good to use gloves as well, because you don't get it all over your fingers. But I forgot to put a glove on this hand. So, um, so what I'm going to do is just very lightly drag these um, along the edges. I think this is is this eight? Oh, six. No, that's fine. If you use a softer color, a softer uh, graphite, rather than using the B's rather than the H's, it should come off a little bit more easy. And we're just going to drag these along the edges of the metal areas, and what you'll see is a slight metal sheen appearing. You can see that. Uh, alternatively, you can kind of, another thing I've done is rub it on my fingers. If it's a softer one like this, it should come off quite nicely, and then you can literally just go rub that finger over the um, of the metal areas and that covers quite nicely as well. You could use a paint for this, but I find this is much quicker and it also um, creates more of a realistic metal sheen rather than like that sparkly um, 
like glittery appearance that some metallic paints can create. There we go. So white or black undercoat for Death Guard. For these guys, I've used a red oxide undercoat, a red primer color. Um, I'd probably use um, black and then a tan over the top, like for Zenith Arlo. Depends what you're, what you're painting, really. It always does depend. If you're painting lighter colors or if you're using contrast paints, then lighter, lighter base coats are best. If you're gonna use dry brushing or airbrushing, then black base coats work quite nicely as well. It helps to give you those shadows. So we're starting to see the met like the met the, the metal appearance start to come through now. What is that steel brick? So this is graphite. This is a, a graphite um what's it called graphite stick, I suppose. You can get them on eBay, um, Amazon, art supplies, things like that. It's basically a pencil but without the wood around the outside of it. So you could use a pencil if you wanted to. Can you do a minor tools conversion? Yes, there is one coming. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there's actually a tutorial for this, hoping um, for Friday. Hopefully there'll be a tutorial for this going up on Friday. So yes, minor tools will be covered, conversion tutorial. <laughs> Arc 2301, latest tip and no data, yeah. Sadly, that's that's the case. No data, because no one's tipped. That's fine. I'm happy to be here. These are actually kind of like the highlight of my week at the moment as well. I'm enjoying doing these streams. Um, I'm going to try maybe try a game stream at some point. Maybe play some Vermintide or Total War if my computer can handle streaming and gaming at the same time. I don't know if it will do. We'll see. Okay, so I think that's kind of enough for the time being of the graphite I've just been working. There we go. Get the focus right. So you can see they've kind of got this, this metallic effect to the weapons, which is very subtle, and it just kind of doesn't detract from the griminess of the overall model. And I'm just bringing this model here. One of the things that I did as well was um, I just had a little bit of, of nylac oxide over these, these sections. Just basically anything that would be bronze. So that's going to be... The, the shoulder pads um, or the, um, the little trinkets that are dotted around. For the, the weapons, I'd keep them as just plain steel, just like rusted steel. I know I said I was done with this, but I don't think I am. There we go. A bit better. Champion of Nurgle, what's my favorite conversion so far? Um, Hmm. I would say I really like the one that I did for the Imperial Fist, that kind of um, the guy who had the big backpack and the extra armor and the, the, the modified bolt. I really like doing that one. Um, I kind of struggled with, with the idea for doing that particular tutorial for quite a long time. Uh, I wasn't sure what to do that would be Imperial Fist-like. Um, and... Once I kind of figured out that these guys were basically engineers and started to kind of roll with that, it actually worked uh, worked quite well. So yeah. Oh, sorry guys, I've just accidentally, accidentally transitioned. Um, let's actually bring this back in again. That's whilst we're here. Let's have a look, see where we are against this. So if I bring in, so this is the Death Guard. So I think, I mean, I actually chose this one because it looks very similar to the painting. Um, I think it's not far off. There's obviously certain areas on, on the the art which is a bit more, um, which is a little bit more kind of orangey than this one, but I don't want to go too orange with it. I want it to kind of keep a nice, um, kind of subdued and subtle appearance to that. So I think we're getting there. I think that's looking, looking good. Let's just close that back off again. So, what can we do for the next 10 minutes? 
because I actually completed this a lot all. I haven't delved into it at all, but what does the Blanchitsu essentially mean? Okay, so I, I did kind of briefly cover it at the beginning. Um, so Halo Geek 1, 3 through 7. The tips are, I think, in... Oh, actually, Mike Davison, five pounds. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, there's, there's a little link in the description. I think if you just go follow that, then it kind of gives you a little bit of an option to use like PayPal. Um, but yes, thank, thanks guys. Really appreciate it. It just means I can kind of do a few more little interesting videos, maybe some bigger conversions and things like that. So let's have a look at some of the things that I've got um, planned for these guys. So one of the things I'm in the, in the middle of doing is... Um, a plague burst crawler, which, considering the new the new rules for vehicles in ninth, I'm actually very looking forward to. I've got another one of these to do once I finish this. So this is actually something I'm going to try and replicate this kind of scheme for these guys on. Um, I think it'll work quite well. I'd be interested to see how this kind of scheme transitions because sometimes these kind of techniques don't always work as well on vehicles as they do on um, infantry. So some of my speed painting guys work really well for infantry models, but maybe wouldn't be as applicable um, to something like uh, a rhino or something like that. But yeah, I'm going to give this a go um, at some point. So, I mean, if you want to see it done on a stream, I could do. Yeah, so I think with looking at Blue Oyster Cult, Blue Oyster Cult's um, comment there about the... Um, creations of bile I think it, yeah I think we haven't heard an awful lot I think there's a little bit of, of information has been released obviously we had some rules it's effectively actually acting as its own legion um, and I think I want to kind of get get my hands on those rules and actually see what kind of um, where I can go with those conversions because it needs to be unique enough and I need to be able to kind of obviously think of a way of what kits I can use and um, how I can go about making them obvious that these are experiments of of uh, Fabius Bile. The spread is 84 subscribed. Thank you very much. I don't know if you're on the stream, but uh, um, which painter, which YouTubers do you enjoy watching paint? Um, I really like watching um, oh my god, is it um, Juan Grelles? He does a lot of the um, contrast tutorials, care space ring tutorials and things like that. He's, he's very good. He's very good to watch. Um, and going back to what I said earlier about the contrast paints being very versatile, he doesn't just use contrast paints, but the fact that he integrates them into his um, his painting and then does some interesting things with them um, kind of to build up on them. And the results are really amazing. So I definitely rec uh, recommend checking him out. Airbrush always works on vehicles. Yeah, it, it it does always work on the vehicles, but I think um, one of the things um, which I'm I'm kind of cons well, I'm not really 100% sure about is if whether the contrast paints will look quite as good over them. Uh, contrast paints do have a little bit of a struggle over these kind of larger areas, so hopefully it'll be okay. Um, and because I'm not using very many colors, I just want to make sure that on a larger model like this, it won't look too basic, it won't look too simplistic. So I think the airbrush fine portion is fine, um, but I want it to replicate this. Um, what else do I have to hand to, to show you? Hello from France, goodbye and good night. Hello from England, goodbye and good night. Do you have any ideas on how to pull off a Chaos Apothecary conversion? It looks actually like, if you've seen, if you've seen the Warhammer community post today, it kind of looks like we're getting a kind of a Chaos um, It's part of those kind of new Fabius Bile rules. It looks like, it kind of looks like the equivalent of a surgeon. He, he seems more like one of the um, the guy from the Gene Stealer Court, the one that's got like the injections to improve his, his troops. I think it does, um, it looks like an apothecary. So maybe use that as a basis, probably. Um, how long does it take you to think and make a conversion you think looks good? So sometimes it's very quick. Sometimes I just get an idea and I literally just, everything falls together really nicely. So I'm just kind of do a prototype or do a dry fit and everything just works. And I'm really happy with the results. Sometimes I'll have ideas and I'll work on them for a few days and then they just don't go anywhere and I don't like the conversion, I scrap it. 
sometimes I'll come back to it and it's, it, it, it works out then. Uh, Halo Geek 1337, thanks for the tip. Appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, I think for, for a conversion, it probably takes me about a, a week to two weeks for um, one model, but I tend to be thinking about things all the time. I have, I have a little note, a Google Docs, which just add in notes, and sometimes they work out okay, sometimes they don't work okay. Do you prefer real silver gold, or do you prefer the non-metallic metal look? Um, so personally, I've, I'm, I'm not very good at non-metallic metals. I've given them a go, and I, I can kind of get them to some degree um, if I bring in... This is my latest attempt at it, this guy on here. So I tried to do a little bit of, of kind of the non-metallic metal um, on his saber, and then a little bit on the pistol as well. And I can kind of get it to a degree, a little bit on the, on the shoulder, but I mean, I can't get it to kind of standards that some people can. Um, so for the time being, I tend to just stick to true metallics. Um, and there's actually some really interesting metallic paints that I want to try out, which you apply and then the light waxes and then you polish them and they go really nice and shiny. So this is one that's obviously true metallic and I found this one really nice because I like getting the transition between the darker colors at the bottom, like the bronzes and then the kind of the golds at the top to create shading as well. What else have we got? Um, it does not remove acrylic paint. You have to allow time for the acrylic layers to cure before dabbing. Um, yeah, I think it might have actually... I think I had done the acrylic layers a while, but I think what it was, it was basically just I hadn't... Maybe the primer coat wasn't as good on them. It was a... Um, um, I think it was over some resin, so maybe the primer coat hadn't worked quite well on them, so maybe that was it. Uh, what was that wax shiny paint you just showed off? Um... No, I didn't actually have any. Um, do I have this drawer? So these are actually, I haven't actually used these yet, and I want to try them out. So these are AK Interactive. So these are like um, these wax paints. I, I mean, if you look on the back there, you can see them. So you kind of prime it, you apply the paint, and then you polish it to get like a, a metallic appearance. I want to try these out. Um, I haven't used them yet, but I think they can get some really nice um, metallic appearance with them. What's the difference between a true metallic and regular metallic? Um, so I suppose it depends really, because some people have, um, some people say non-metallic metals and true metallic metals. So true metallic is literally just anything that's got metallic flakes in it. So basically anything, any of the metallic paints that Games Workshop do will be classed as true metallic. Um, non-metallic is when you use non-metallic paints, so like browns and yellows and greys, things like that, to create the appearance of metal. Now some people say, the Games Workshop stuff is just metallic effect. It's not actually true metallic because you don't have like a shiny, um, like a polished surface. It's not like almost like a um, like a proper metal appearance. You're creating almost like the illusion of it. So I think um, those kind of true metallic paints, those through those waxes, I think they might work quite nicely for getting a really nice metallic sheen on things. Um, have you seen the Molotov chrome pens? No, I haven't actually. I, th um, I think it might have popped up in a Facebook feed or something like that. So maybe um, I'll have to check them out. They look quite good. So then we're coming up to the end of the stream now, guys. Um, I was surprised actually how much I managed to do. So let's just kind of get a little bit of a wrap up for this. So I think if I just show each of the steps individually, we can kind of see how the, the model progresses. So we start off on the left here with this model, which is basically very kind of bright, very garish. The the grime layer, this one here, kind of gives us a slightly green hint, like tinge to the color as well. and helps to really help to dull everything down. And then when we get to this stage, we actually get the true result of the model. And we have that kind of shading, we have that kind of darker colors, we have that grim dark effect which we're trying to look for. Um, so yeah. So do you know a brand that sells these waxes? Yeah, so AK Interactive sells some. Um, let's bring it back again. So yeah, they've got this AK Interactive True Metal line. I think they've got a few different colors. Um, I've got metallic blue, 
metallic purple, and then I've got two different variants of, I've got gunmetal and iron. So I don't know, I think one of them, I think iron's a little bit lighter than gunmetal. Um, yeah, so I think the tutorial is over. I think that's kind of the result that we would we would leave. What I would do after this is probably um, var I'd varnish it with a with a, a matte varnish, um, just to remove any shininess that kind of occurs just from applying. Like when I remove the paint, you can see the glossiness is coming through again. So I'd matte varnish it. It helped to seal in this grime layer as well, stop it from rubbing off, and it will also help to remove that shininess. And then I like to just apply a little bit of nylac oxide just around those rivet points as well. So yeah, so uh, a big thank you for joining me in this tutorial, this live stream tutorial. Um, leave me your comments in the description below if you have any suggestions, when this video goes live, of course. If you have any suggestions for other things you would like to see me do on the live stream. Um, at the moment, it's probably just gonna be painting, uh, some conversion work, maybe just some basing as well. Uh, but if you have any ideas. Um, I also have a few more items going up on my Teespring store. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, it kind of appears at the bottom. There's a way of apparently adding them on here, but we'll see. I've been doing some Imperial Fist uh, Sandcastle Build-a-thon t-shirts and a bunch of other stuff. And I've also done a Salamanders themed Nocturne Summer Cookout t-shirt as well. So if you want to see some like jokey meta kind of 140k stuff, there's those. Um, Patreon, you can Feel free to support me on there if you don't want to, that's fine. I'll still be making these videos, still be making them all for free. But Patreon support just means I can I can try out different materials, I can try out different techniques, I can kind of expand what I'm working on. In fact, it allowed me to buy the camera that I'm using for the stream right now. So huge thank you to everyone who supports me with Patreon. I've got membership on the channel now if you want to do that as well. You get access to a few little emotes and stuff. Um, yeah, so there's also Discord as well. I always forget to <laughs> um, point out the Discord server. There's a Discord server link in the description. Uh, join that, talk to a bunch of people who watch my channel. Everyone's really friendly. It's very kind of chill, chilled out atmosphere. Um, there's a lot of good advice in there. If you like 3D printing, if you like conversions, you like painting, we have uh, little, comp little mini competitions on there every now and again as well. So yeah, thanks for joining in and I hope to see you again on the next video and also the next stream. So, thanks for watching guys, and goodbye.